ask us about uh, what light actually is. So I will do a short video about what light is. And I can start by drawing the uh, spectral power distribution, which is um, where you see the wavelength. And you have from here 380 nanometers to 760 nanometers. So in between these nanometers, you have a thousand, I would say a million uh, different colors. And, uh, and depending on what light source you have, let's say we have uh, an incandescent bulb, you have a spectral power distribution, which is like this. So no matter where you go up, you have a good color rendering index, which is good. But on the other hand, you also have a lot of energy in this area here, where you have the infrared uh, wavelength, and that is, that is, uh, that is heat. And that's also why you have, uh, why the Europe and also US have banned these bulbs because there's a lot of heat in uh, in these uh, bulbs. So, uh, for instance, uh, five percent of the energy that is used for the incandescent bulb is for light, and the, the last 97, uh, 95 is for heat. So that is not uh, so uh, energy efficient. So for that instance, but we have a good um, a good color rendering index, and we have a warm light. If we go over to see to the LED lighting, you have uh, typically a blue LED, which is like this. So we have the blue area over here. And then you have phosphor, which is this here. So you do not have a white LED. You have a blue LED, and that is coated with phosphor to get the white light. And depending on what sort of phosphor you are using, you have either a good uh, color rendering index or a bad color rendering index. You can get LEDs for like uh, 60 uh, CRI and you can also get LEDs as high as 98. So that really depends. <coughs> but let's say that you have uh, jeans, blue jeans in a shop. You need uh, a lot of energy in this area here where you have the blue light. Because if you do not have any energy in this area here, you will not get any good color rendering index, uh, color rendering for these blue jeans. On the other hand, if we move down to this area here, where we have the red uh, wavelengths, you, let's say we have a meat here uh, in the supermarket, where you have to, uh, to have a, a, a nice uh, red color, you need to have energies in this area. And that's why LEDs are so good to, uh, to manage the color rendering index, because you can combine the red, green, and blue, and also white to, to have the best color rendering uh, uh, opportunities in these uh, different uh, sorts of, uh, in this case, products. So this is basically how it is. I can go really deeper than that, but it's just you have to remember that we have a color rendering index, which is how the light source is able to generate colors in your room. And you also have the color, um, uh, the Kelvin, uh, the uh, color temperature, which is how cold or how warm the uh, color uh, is on the light torch. So these are the two values that you have to remember. The lower you get in the color rendering index, the I will say the bad, you, you have a bad light torch. If you have, let's say 60, then you have really not clear colors in your uh, different, uh, um, um, in the different areas around the room. And on the other hand, if you have, let's say 90, you have a really good color rendering index. So this is it. And then you also, uh, for the last one, about the, uh, the different uh, color temperatures, the lower you get, the warmer you have the light and vice versa. If you go really high, you have a really cold light. Just in comparison, we have a CRI of 100 in daylight and we have around 6,000 Kelvin outside. And on the other hand, if we go down to an incandescent bulb, we have 2,700 Kelvin and a CRI of 99. So with that being said, it was just a short introduction. I hope you liked it. Uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel to get more of these videos.